We can grow. We can develop. As we know that heaven is not a place. And happiness lives in the heart. Long as the world keep turning. Our duty is to keep on learning. You heard? Keep on learning. It's soaking up game. We gon' make mistakes. We gon' go through some things. Keep on growing. Django! Django! Let's look at Django. Let's look at Django for a minute. Django was a film that was produced in uh, 1960. It was a spaghetti western about a man, a white man named Django, whose wife was killed, and so he sets out to exact vengeance against all of the people who was responsible for the murder of his family. Right? It's one of them bang, bang, shoot em up westerns. Men doing what men do, or should I say white men doing what white men do, kill just for the hell of it. Just for the hell of it. And so the thing is, is that the actor who played Django in 1960 was given a cameo role in Django in 2012. He was the other owner of uh, the Mandingo fighter in, um, in the Cleopatra Club. It was his fighter who lost. So after his guy lost, he then walks over to the bar and bumps into Django, who's sitting at the bar smoking a cigarette, having a drink. And he turns to him and says, what's your name? Django. Do you know how to spell it? D-J-A-N-G-O. And the guy says, I know. <laughs> so that's Quentin Tarantino giving you a wink wink. You know, that's him paying homage to a director of a film that inspired him, inspired him so much that he decided to name his film after this other film. That's, that's what actors do. I mean, that's what writers do. That's what creative people do. They honor the people who inspire them. So there's nothing new under the sun. So then as we go, go on and learn more about this relationship between Django and Schultz, we see that, that Django is a quick learner. He's a quick study. And when he shoots the rifle and kills uh, uh, the, the proto-clan leader, Schultz says to himself, the kids are natural. In other words, he's acknowledging the fact that Django has these skills, innate skills, buried deep inside. And all he's doing is giving him opportunities to bring out the genius that has always been inside of him, but was oppressed because of this system known as slavery. <laughs> He says that Django is a quick learner, he's a natural, and he says that Django is going to be the fastest gun in the South. We also see that Django is fearless. So let's look at another character in the film, another important character in the film, Calvin Candy. These characters, their names have meaning and value, okay? Calvin Candy, according to the story, was a third generation slave owner. He inherited Candy Land from his father, who inherited it from his father. And Sam Jackson's character, Stephen, uh, was a servant to all three of the, um, of the owners of Candyland, okay? And so he's a third generation devil who reigns over a man-made hell in Chickasaw County called Candyland. <coughs> Calvin Candy is a spoiled rich kid, ignorant. He takes on, you know, he, he's a Francophile. So he wants everyone to call him a sewer. He likes French food, but he can't speak French. <laughs> too dumb or too lazy to learn to speak the language, right? So that's one of the other contradictions that you see in the film, one of the other conflicts that you see between the European personalities in the film. So he becomes bored with plantation life 
and he, began, he begins to, to make a decision to get into the Mandingo fight game. He stages Battles Royale, or Fights to the Death, which was a popular form of entertainment in 19th century America, and has its roots going all the way back to ancient Rome, to the gladiators, fighting to the death, fighting lions, tigers, and each other. So if you just imagine that, people sitting, thousands of people sitting in the stadium, <coughs> watching people being beaten to death and calling that entertainment. That's a part of their culture. That's a part of their history. So Quentin Tarantino lays that out for us. The other thing that's so significant about this is that Candyland, this plantation, or I don't like to call them plantations, this concentration camp. Because when you read the stories about what happened to our ancestors, you realize that these were not plantations, they were concentration camps. Adolf Hitler learned how to kill Jews based on studying how American whites kill black folk. Okay? So these so-called plantations in America were the forerunners to the concentration camps in Europe. Adolf Hitler, they want to paint Adolf Hitler as, as a, this mass murderer, as a madman. Well, he learned from Americans. And what they don't talk about often was how he was supported by Americans. Adolf Hitler was supported by Henry Ford, supported him and gave him money. IBM, IBM gave Adolf Hitler, gave Germany the computers to run their killing apparatus. All of this has been documented. The Bush family, Preston Bush, Bush. all right, Prescott Bush, bankrolled him because they didn't like Jews either. So if you want to understand something about hatred, if you want to understand something about terrorism, don't look in the so-called Middle East. Look in Europe. Look in America. And you'll see the best examples of hatred that the world has ever seen. So Candyland is a metaphor for the mountaintop where Broomhilda was held prisoner. All right? And so, if you look at the script for Django Unchained, the very last line in the script of Django Unchained reads, Django leaves Candyland, having rescued his Broomhilda from her mountain, her ring of hellfire, and all of her dragons. You got that? So Quentin Tarantino took this myth, this story of Broomhilda, and projected it onto this plantation, this concentration camp in Chickasaw County, Mississippi called Candy Land.